Hallelujah. Praise the Lord right where we are. Welcome back, everyone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are in school. That is such good news. And here I am in the church of St. Mary in Homington, same parish as Coombisset, just along the road from school. I wonder if you saw in the background as you were listening to the music, our tree. Here it is. It's our prayer tree. And we're inviting people to come in and write a prayer and hang it on the tree. We're inviting people to sit for a while and just pray. A thank you prayer, a sorry prayer, a please prayer. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you say your prayers. I bet you're so excited to be back that it's difficult, isn't it, to think of things that you are frightened of. There's so much joy just to be back at school. Although maybe a lot of you were a bit scared about coming back. Maybe some of you are still at home because you're a bit scared. I'm always a bit scared at the beginning of a term. And I, when I used to teach, I would think, have I forgotten how to? Will they listen? Will I have lost all that I was capable of? And then, of course, as soon as we started, everything came back and it was fine. And I am a bit frightened at the moment because we're beginning to open our churches for ordinary worship and for worship getting back to how we were a year ago. We're beginning to think about having meetings face to face, not on Zoom anymore. And we're beginning to think about the future. And it's a bit scary. You know, I'm thinking, do I want to go out at night and do all these meetings? Oh, no, I really don't. But that's the time, of course, when you have to ask for that strength. Be strong, be bold and courageous. And I know in school this week you're thinking about looking at those who are being brave and facing a challenge. Well, there you are. I've told you what my challenges are. I wonder what yours are. And sometimes, oh, it's so difficult, isn't it? What do we do? How do we stop being nervous and frightened and, oh. I often take a deep breath. And I often send up a, what we call arrow prayers. So I, I, it sort of shoots up from me, up to God. Oh, please God, just let me do this. Let me do this right. Deep breath. And in you go. And often it's fine, isn't it, once you've started. Like when I used to teach and go back at the beginning of term and think, oh, I can't. But once you get going, it's fine. One of the stories that we have chosen to go with um, this quality, this value of bravery, is the story of David and Goliath. Now, I haven't told this story for ages, absolutely ages. And it's a story that Jesus would have known absolutely because David grew up to be the most famous king that Israel had ever had. And often we mention him, you read about him in the Bible, and on Palm Sunday, when we all have those palm crosses, we shout out, Hosanna to the King of David, 
Hosanna! And that's the story of David that I'm going to read to you today. I'm sure a lot of you will know it. And it's a story that really shows bravery and courage. And facing completely a ghastly situation. It's a long, long, long time ago. It's an old, old story. Probably about 1,500 years before Jesus, even longer than that. So it is a long time ago. So things were very different than we have today. I just wanted to tell you that, just to put it into the right context. So... Here's the story. And at the end, I'm going to show you the picture because it makes me laugh. The Israelites were at war with the Philistines, whose leader was a giant named Goliath. Send one man to fight with me, he roared. If he loses... The Israelites will be our slaves forever. The Israelites were terrified. No one could beat Goliath. David's father had sent him to take food to his brothers who were in the army. And when David heard Goliath's challenge, he said... I'll fight him. <laughs> well, everybody laughed. You're just a boy, said Saul, who was the king at the time. He is a great warrior, a giant of a man. I'm only a shepherd, said David, but whenever a lion took a lamb from my father's flock, I chased it and rescued the lamb from its mouth. Well, since no one else was willing to fight, Saul gave David his sword and his shield, but they were far too heavy for him. So David just took five smooth stones from the river and his trusty slingshot. Come here, boy, said Goliath as he drew his sword. I'll slice you in half and leave your body for the vultures. You come with a sword, David replied. But I come with God at my side. David put a stone in his sling, swung it round his head and let it fly. The stone struck Goliath in the forehead. And the giant fell down dead. All the other Philistines gasped and ran away. The Israelites cheered this small boy who had one piece for them. And many years later, when David became the king, everyone remembered his bravery in fighting the giant. It's a good story, isn't it? Oh, I was going to show you the picture. Close the book. I'll find it. While you think about that giant Goliath. There he is. Ooh, doesn't he look terrifying? Horrible. 
And there is little David with his sheep, sending that stone. He looks frightened, doesn't he? I'm sure he was. But he said that very special sentence. I have God at my side. That's what I hope you feel. That's what I hope helps you when you are afraid. And one of the ways in getting closer to God and getting that feeling that he's there right with you is to spend time, spend time with him, saying your prayers. Remember the prayer tree? Saying your prayers, getting to know him. One of the exciting things that has happened literally in the last week it started off really sad because we were supposed to have our confirmation service this term in a couple of weeks' time, actually, but obviously we can't. But I spoke to the bishop and he said, I really want to do a confirmation service. I want to be with you to celebrate. Let's find a date. So we have, we found one date that we could all do in June. So Bishop Andrew will be coming to confirm, baptise and celebrate communion with us. It will be the first time we've done that for over a year. We're just hoping it all works out. It'll be a lovely occasion but it will be even better if we have some of you who want to be brave be courageous, stand up and say, yes, I want to know God and I want everyone to know that I want to know. Remember, if you want to be baptised, have the water poured over your head, just in year, um, anyone in school can do that. And then if you want to take the next step after baptism, that's confirmation and that's for year four and above. So anyone in school can be baptised. But if you're in year four, year five, year six, member of staff, granny and grandpa, mum and dad, brothers and sisters, if you're free on June the 22nd at two o'clock, that's the day you can stand up, be brave and be confirmed or baptised. You won't have to be very brave because God, our God, will be standing right beside you. Let's say a prayer. Heavenly Father, things sometimes look difficult. Sometimes we are afraid. Give us the courage to have confidence in ourselves that we can achieve what is set before us. Help us to have bravery in everything we do. And above all, help us to have the courage to say yes I want to know you, God, much more. Amen. Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And may...
courage and bravery be with you this day. May you feel God's presence beside you in everything you do. And may you be with each other, enjoying each other's company and getting into the school routine this day and always. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all today and every day. Amen. Now, let's see if we can find some music. Hmm. Will we find it? Here we go. What shall we do, this one? What else can we do but this? Come on. 